an eviction and then moving to a claim of right. But you wouldn't go from a claim of right to a tenancy, yes? Okay. In other words, if you're claiming that the land is, is in your possession and that you are claiming occupation and therefore they cannot tax you and therefore there is no landlord-tenant relationship anymore, you wouldn't then revert back to the tenant remedy, would you? Right. Okay. In an eviction process, the tenancy path is probably easier if you're at the end of a, an eviction process than the claim of right. Then if the eviction process rolls through, which it may well, you can then use the claim of right as a second remedy. Yeah? Okay. But if you try and play on the claim of right after you've had a foreclosure hearing or facing all the eviction process late in the day, then you'll be scrambling. You'll be desperate and you'll run out of time. So I really suggest for people to think about the appropriate remedy at the appropriate time. It is all about saving your home, but I can't make that decision for you. It has to be made in competence. Now, I mentioned RSY, well, I got to my phone, just to share with others, if you don't mind. I did mention this issue of not mixing remedies, but I would say there are a number of practical steps that we haven't got there, which people should consider. Withdrawing consent, a notice or an affidavit of withdrawal of consent is a valid instrument. There are lots of instruments you can use in addition to what we're doing that are extremely valuable and important. But my comment was merely to, to use discretion on what you choose. And that's the same thing here. I use discretion. If you are facing the imminent possibility of eviction after a drawn out process on foreclosure, I would not suggest you do a deed of right claim at this point, personally. It's entirely up to you. But I could, I could follow through on the, um, what is it, the right of tenancy or something? Yeah, the right of equity and redemption. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Which okay. is, you know, I, I, will, I will restore my honour and at the same time I will lodge. Uh, now, if you've gone through the hearing, these things may be limited to you because you've gone through the hearing and you've missed that opportunity. Don't worry. But, but you will have missed the opportunity, for example, to use discovery and interrogatories as a very powerful tool. But, but we'll get clear on this and it's about helping people um, it's about helping you. So, Iris, hopefully that clears up your questions. All okay. Right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Good. Thanks so much. Uh, we're going to try and see if we can get guest 10 back on. Okay. Um, all righty. Guest 10, uh, you're live uh, with Eucadia. Well, uh, there might be an audio problem. Uh, Guest 10 keeps uh, queuing up in line, but uh, there's there's no questions. So we're going to take uh, the next caller. Right. Guest 10, put your question in um, in the chat, and I'll try and keep track of it too, all right? So far away. Uh, yep. Next up, uh, we're going to talk to Ron D48. Uh, Ron, you're, uh, you're live. Hello, you're Brian. Live. Hello, Frank. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Good, good. You've been working really hard, Frank. <laughs> You've been working really hard, I can tell. Hey, look, um, when I was assembling the, the Book of the Green Race, of course, I, I, I lightly scanned it as I was assembling the book for um, to put it up on U of U. Um, why is there so much evil when the creator could eliminate the evil and make earth a paradise i don't i don't understand why there's so much evil maybe you can okay. shed some light on that sure okay there's another book that is well and truly unfinished but it will be finished before the end of the year it's on a site called one-evil.org and it's called today magisterium there was a group 2000 years ago that are variously called the Gnostics. In fact, we just celebrated uh, a day in honour of the leader of the Gnostics in Rome <clears throat> called Valentinus. 
for the day of Valentinus or Valentine's Day. Mm. Um, and another name for them were the truth seekers or the light seekers, the Nazarenes. And their leader, who was extraordinarily skilled and himself was a member of the Holy and the priest bloodlines, back to the line of David and, and other bloodlines, Ixos, the pharaohs, went on a journey. And when he came back, he gave people an explanation of this very issue. Now, it, it's extraordinarily complex, but I'm going to distill it down to, to this. There is a belief, there is a belief that, 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 that Homo sapiens were given two gifts of being able to tap into a higher source of knowledge above and beyond the evolution of the species by genetic knowledge. The first is the concept of the soul, of the DNA, alien DNA that uh, imbued with us created a um, knowledge map that allowed us to naturally tap in to the big white telephone. Now, I know people joke at that. They think, you know, there's no, there's no alien DNA. They've mapped the genome project. And, you know, if there was any alien DNA, they would, they would tell us. The genome project actually told us that there are genes in our system that cannot be described as anything else but alien. The Genome Project has told us this. Has told us this. And people still don't understand. The Genome Project has told us that they've discovered splicing of our DNA. Not, not uh, malformations, not throwbacks, not mutations. Splicing in our genes. And people still won't read Yes, they put it in the newspapers, and if they don't put it on e-news, people don't watch it because it's got nothing to do with the Kardashians. But it's still being public knowledge. So uh, the reason I'm, I'm going down this road is to explain that in that, the, the leader of the Nazarenes, the Gnostics, 2,000 years ago said, we effectively were given two souls, the soul of light, which was by our making, and the soul of darkness, which was by our teaching, our teachers educating us, those that made us. One is called the counterfeit soul, and one is called the true soul. Now, what is the significance? Well, if one wishes to tap into divine knowledge, both give us a path, a, a path of... Uh, the long path and the short path is another way it's been described in many esoteric, very powerful esoteric texts since the beginning of the earth. That there is a short path and a light path. Now what's a short path? The path says if you perform what we would consider evil, then as perverse as it sounds, that counterfeit soul gives us an ability to tap into that and in that, in that euphoria obtain divine knowledge just as the light path through goodness and humility and self-restraint and meditation gives us a path. So we have had effectively two things inside of us when we shouldn't even have one. Mm. Now, if you put a jet engine in a Morris Minor car, What's, what's the possibility that that jet engine will do? Well, it'll propel that poor little car very fast. And if you put two jet engines at different angles in that car, on top of that car, what's the risk that will happen to the chassis of that Morris Minor? No, it's gone. It's gone. It's yep. toast. Well, that chassis is the flesh vessel of our body. We... We were not supposed to survive. We were supposed to tear ourselves apart. Tear ourselves apart. Mm. We're not supposed to be here. We have such a paradox inside of us. We were supposed to have killed 
ourselves as wild animals, you know, in right. an orgy, in an orgy of, of, of decadence and, 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 you know, disease. Darkness, as terrible as it is, as terrible as it is, has given us an extraordinarily incredible gift because it's brought us the possibility that now those two jet engines are no longer at opposite directions and the chassis of the car is no longer a car but a stealth B2 super stealth bomber. Yeah? Yep. And now we have the ability to soar because both those engines can be united, both those engines can be in sync, and the history over the last few thousand years, even though it's been extraordinarily dark, has built us to a point that if we stop now being stupid, we can actually survive and live in a balanced way in paradise. I believe for the first time in our history. That's the truth, I believe. I think it will happen too. We just need more foot soldiers, Frank. You know? Well, that, that, that'll come and people will come. For example, Guest 10 just put something in and stay on life stick, but uh, there, there's going to be... Um, I know a number of you have, have read it and said, okay, these are all the things I need to say. I go to court, I say them, and hopefully they will believe me. You can't go to court with a monologue in your head. I'm sorry, that's not the intent. And I'm actually going to write this as a new section. You can't go to court with a monologue. The only way to go to court is knowing who and what you are, clear your head, be in the present moment, and it's not about scoring points. If you say nothing else but know how not to consent, not to accept their honour, then you have the ability to, to stand. I, it, it's so hard. It all happens in a flash. I mean, court cases, they're moving through court cases faster than a pill dispensary. So it's easy to say it. You're in there, and literally it happens in five minutes. But I, 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 I just say that anyone that's struggling at the moment, all I say is please, Continue to read, continue to reflect, but know that monologues will not help you in the court process. And one court process that doesn't go your way doesn't mean it's over. So, again, we'll show you how that, that, that works. So, Ron, was there any other questions before we move on? Are you okay? Um, I'm fine, but are you going to finish the green book? Yes. Well, it, the book finishes at the 12th century, basically. Yeah. I know. It, it kind of left us hanging there. Well, they they uh, they destroyed Tara, Torah, and uh, that's pretty much the you know beginning of the last uh, well 1260 years by oh. Daniel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's in today Magisterium. So today Magisterium is the history of what we would call evil from the beginning, and uh, and how it ends. Okay. I'd just like to let the audience know that the, the Book of the Green Race is now in PDF form at the U of U download under the Law Book section. Thanks, Ron. Thank sure. you. Good night. Good night. Yeah, thanks so much for that, Ron. Um, yeah, it, it's one of these biggest issues is everyone's out looking for saviors or someone else to help them, where the, the help is actually within. And, and one of the uh, the exercises of going through things is on a collective conscious level, uh, and certainly of, of conscious awareness, is you see everybody like uh, always looking to the outside, such as uh, people will work on their car, uh, they'll work on their house, they'll even go to the gym and work on their body. But no one really grasps the fundamentals of working on consciousness and uh, resolving those principles of the schisms uh, between the dark night and the soul. So uh, one of the clearing of the conscious field is also, uh, you know, accepting and coming to terms 
that these principles of these schisms were, were originally put into.